Hello and welcome to Rotary Rocketry. Today I'm going to be working on the development of an easy to build single use steel rocket motor casing. Now even though this motor is going to be nearly identical to our Dart Monkey PVC case motor, there's a reason that I need this motor to be significantly stronger with a steel casing. I'll tell you more about that right after this. No! Give me the shirt! No! Give me the shirt! No! Hey guys, you don't need to fight over a rotary rocketry t-shirt. We don't? Show him where he can get his own. Oh, cool! Wow! Nice shirt. Warning. Purchasing a rotary rocketry t-shirt may result in envy or jealousy from friends and family. T-shirt does not magically appear on your body. You need to purchase it and put it on yourself. So I've been working on a new formula for rocket fuel. The preliminary tests are going well, but this particular fuel requires very high pressure in order to burn fast. Much higher pressure than what one of our PVC case motors would be able to handle. And that's why we need a simple, easy to build steel case motor. Now this motor is going to be built basically identical to our Dart Monkey Model 2, where we have a pipe that has an anchoring cement nozzle on one end and an anchoring cement bulkhead on the other end. Now I do want to stress test this motor a little bit, so I'm going to change the nozzle size. Our Dart Monkey motors use a number 19 nozzle. In order to build up a little bit more pressure in this motor, I'm going to drop that down to a number 18 nozzle size, or 18 64ths of an inch. Now, I've already cut this pipe to its proper length of 5 and a quarter inches, so let's take this out to the shop and start working on it. I'm going to use a Dremel tool with a rough sanding disc on it, just to roughen up the metal on the inside of the pipe on both ends. I'm not looking to damage or cut into the pipe in any way. I just want to get it a little rough so that the anchoring cement will have a little bit of better surface to bond to rather than the smooth surface of the pipe. Next I'm going to drill six quarter inch diameter holes around the end of the pipe on both ends. And just like on the Dart Monkey motor here, I want the center of the holes to be one quarter inch down from the end of the pipe. So I'm going to start out by drawing a line around the pipe one quarter inch up, just by using this piece of quarter inch material. Now the exact positioning of these holes is not extremely critical. I'm just going to mark the top of the pipe to start off with. If we just make a little line right here and then go right across to the other side of the pipe right there. Now on this half here we just want to divide that into three equal parts. So basically a line here and a line here. And then on this half of the pipe we'll do the same divided into three equal parts with a line here and a line there. We'll just trace those lines down onto the mark we made at a quarter inch. I'll repeat that on the other side and then we'll be ready to drill all those holes. I'll start out with some small pilot holes first and then increase to the quarter inch diameter. Now that left a lot of rough and sharp edges on the inside of those holes, so I used the same Dremel tool just to clean that up. Now we'll pick one end to be the nozzle end. On that end, I'll take some tape and I'll just wrap that around the piping to cover all the holes so that when we pour the anchoring cement in, it doesn't pour out of the holes. Now I do want to take a little pin and poke some holes in here so that the air can come out and the anchoring cement will fully fill those holes. So if this is going to be in this position here with the nozzle facing down as we're pouring the anchoring cement, we want to poke a couple of little holes 
around the top of each one of those holes in the steel pipe. That'll just let the air come out and the anchoring cement will be able to fully fill each one of those openings. Now this is our nozzle washer. It's just a thin fender washer with an 18 64 hole in the center for a number 18 nozzle or 930 seconds. And then I've got an earplug. This is one inch tall and there's a line drawn around it halfway up at the half inch point. If we just crush that earplug down and put it into the nozzle washer, we'll let that re-expand so that the washer is completely covering that line. That way there'll be a half an inch of the earplug below the washer and a half inch of the earplug above. And we want it to be nice and level so that when we sit that down on the table, the washer is sitting nice and flat. I'll lay a piece of duct tape on the table and place that right in the center and just push it down a little bit so that it sticks nicely to the tape. And then I'll take the pipe with the tape side down. And as I'm looking down through the center of the pipe, I'll place that down onto the tape just so that the earplug and the washer are perfectly centered in the middle. Next, I'll mix up a small batch of anchoring cement. And I'll pour that down into the motor casing just until it barely covers the top of the earplug. And then I need to give that anchoring cement about 20 to 25 minutes to set up before we move on. 20 minutes later. Now I can remove the tape from the bottom and also remove the tape around the holes. And then I can use some needle nose pliers to gently pull out the earplug. Now right now there's no hole through the nozzle because the top of the earplug was covered with a thin layer of anchoring cement. So if I just take one of my coring rods with a point or even just a Phillips screwdriver, I can poke down through that and just poke out that thin layer of anchoring cement. And there's the hole. I'll let this sit overnight so all the moisture evaporates out of the anchoring cement before we pour the fuel. Now that the anchoring cement is dry, I'm going to glue a small disc of paper down to cover the nozzle hole so when we pour the fuel in, it doesn't pour out the nozzle hole. Here's that little piece of paper down over the nozzle. The fuel for this motor is Flexi Fuel Sugar Fuel. It's 65% potassium nitrate, 17% powdered sugar, and 18% corn syrup. And I'll cook it to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to make a batch of 125 grams because that's what normally goes in the PVC case version of this motor that's very similar in size. I'm using a 5 8 diameter steel coring rod and I built this little tool on the lathe just to help keep the rod straight as it's inserted into the motor. I'll let that cool for about half an hour and then I can pull out the coring rod. Later. And then remove the core rod alignment tool and the core rod. I need to clean off a little bit of excess fuel that got onto the side of the pipe up here at the top. And once I have that cleaned off, I'm going to drill up through the nozzle with a 930 seconds drill bit just to clear out the fuel that's blocking the nozzle hole. I cleaned off any oil from the coring process at the top of the fuel and inside of the pipe 
and I'm just going to glue a little piece of paper on top of that core hole so that when we pour the anchoring cement on for the top bulkhead, it doesn't pour into the core. The last thing this motor needs is a bulkhead to seal the end, but just as we did down on the bottom, we're going to cover those holes with tape and then poke some holes in the tops of those holes with a needle so that the air can release and those holes will fully fill with the anchoring cement. After pouring the anchoring cement, I'll let this sit for about 20 minutes for the anchoring cement to harden up a little bit and then I can remove the tape. 20 minutes later. I'm going to let that anchoring cement dry for at least 12 hours before testing the motor. In the meantime, I'll roll up the earplug and put it into the nozzle to prevent moisture in the air from getting to the fuel. All right, we're ready to test it. Now, as I see it, there's basically four possible ways for this motor to fail. First off, it could simply explode. Second possible failure would be a burn through. Now the steel casing is really strong, but if the hot gases come in contact with that casing, they can actually superheat the steel and just burn a hole right through it. The third possible failure would be an end blowout, and that would be as if the nozzle end or the bulkhead end simply blows out of the casing because it wasn't held in there strongly enough. And then the fourth possibility would be a blow-by, and that would be as if the hot gases find a path out between the steel casing and the anchoring cement, either at the bulkhead end or the nozzle end, and the gases come out in a gap in that area, or they come out one of the holes that we drilled around the casing. So those are the things we're going to be watching for. Let's test the motor. Wow, that was fantastic. Now, it did look like the motor got off to a little bit of a slow start, and that might have been because of the smaller core hole size we've got here of 5 eighths of an inch instead of 3 quarter that we normally use for this size motor. But it went fantastic. Looked like it put out a good amount of thrust, and there's absolutely no damage, no blow through. It's perfect. So I'll go back to the shop and take a better look at that footage, and we'll see what we've got. I watched all the video and I am super happy with how this motor performed. As I mentioned earlier, I'm working on a brand new formula for rocket fuel and this motor casing is going to allow me to test that fuel under high pressure. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. And be sure to hit that like button, we really appreciate it. Also check out the full line of Rotary Rocketry t-shirts, there's a link to the shop down in the description. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers.